ever get that feeling? You know, like you stumble on a story mm -hmm. and it just stops you in your tracks. It's like every detail just deepens the mystery and you're left wondering what really happened. Well, that's exactly what we're diving into today. The baffling disappearance of Jennifer Wyant. And what makes Jennifer's story so captivating, even after four decades, is that it could happen to anyone. I mean, here's a young woman, just 21 years old, living what seems like a totally normal life in 1980s Nashville. But then, poof, gone. Vanished. It's like something out of a movie. So Jennifer, she's living at the Tanglewood Court Apartments, right? <laughs> Driving that new Trans Am. Oh, she was proud of that car, too. And on top of that, she's taking night classes. Sounds like she had a good head on her shoulders, you know? Driven. Absolutely. Responsible, uh, ambitious, not someone you'd expect to just disappear. Right. And that's what makes June 27th, 1980 so strange. It's a Friday. Jennifer's having lunch with coworkers, talking about the softball game that night. Normal stuff. Casual Friday lunch at Taco Bell on Nolansville Road. Hard to imagine that's the last time anyone sees her. It's like she walked out of that Taco Bell and straight into thin air. And here's the thing that always gets me. Her car. It's found right where she left it, at her apartment complex. You'd think if someone wanted to harm her, they'd take the car, right? It's a head scratcher. It's like whoever took her wanted it to look like she just walked away. Which is honestly even creepier. It's a classic disappearance puzzle. But there was one thing that came out later, years later actually. A detail that throws a wrench into the whole thing. You're talking about her neighbors? Yeah. The ones who said they saw her being taken? Yeah. I mean, talk about a bombshell. It gives me chills just thinking about it. Mm -hmm. They said they saw a car, a dark sedan, outside her building that night. Heard screams, saw people forcing someone who they thought was Jennifer into the car. Terrifying. And here's the kicker. They went straight to the apartment security guard, told him everything. But guess what? He didn't file a police report. Nope. Nothing. It's like, what was going through his head? We may never know. So we've got a young woman, vanished, cars there, neighbors see something. Security guard does nothing. It's like a bad dream. And as if it couldn't get weirder, six months later, another curveball. December 11th rolls around. A construction worker is out near Blue Lake Lane. That's not too far from Piercy Priest Lake, right? You know the area? Vaguely. Well, back then it was all woods out there. Anyway, this construction worker, he finds something. Jennifer's driver's license. Just the license, not her purse, wallet. Anything else? Just the license. Like a breadcrumb leading to nowhere. Why leave the license? It's like leaving a calling card, almost taunting the police, you know? It's a strange one, right? And Detective Filter, he's got this theory that it might have something to do with Piercy Priest Lake. Because of where the license was found. Exactly. I mean, think about it. Back then, Piercy Priest, it was surrounded by woods way more than now. It would have been easy to, you know, mm -hmm. make something disappear. And they searched those woods, right? With no. dogs and everything. Oh, yeah. Multiple searches. They even had divers in the lake. Yeah. And nothing. Zilch! Which makes you wonder, either whoever did this knew those woods like the back of their hand, or they got lucky. Or, and this is a thought that keeps me up at night, what if they were never there to begin with? What if Jennifer's... You know, I get what you're saying. It's like, why go through the trouble of leaving the license if you're just going to dump the body somewhere obvious? Right. It feels deliberate. Right. Like sending a message. But what kind of message is that? And to whom? Hmm. The police. The family. That's the million dollar question, isn't it? And honestly, we may never know the answer. We don't even know for sure if there was a message in the first place. It could have been random. True. But still, it's hard not to see a connection. License found near the lake. Can take a filter thinks she might be there. And yet nothing. No sign of her. It's like she vanished into thin air. Again. It's enough to make you believe in ghosts, you know? Tell me about it. But speaking of ghosts, there's another aspect of this case we haven't even touched on yet. The softball game. The softball game. Yeah. Jennifer was supposed to be there that Friday night, the night she disappeared. Yep. And it's like, did anyone even notice she wasn't there? Did she just not show up? Or did something happen on the way there? I mean, it was 1980, no cell phones, no way to easily reach someone. It's crazy to think about how different things were back then. Totally. People could just disappear. And no one would know until much later. Which makes you wonder about those people at the softball game. Someone there might have seen something. Maybe someone remembers Jennifer arguing with someone. Or, I don't know, getting into a strange car. Or maybe not. Maybe it was completely unrelated. But here's the thing. Even the smallest detail, it could be the missing piece. That's what Detective Filter keeps saying. So what you're saying is, even after all this time, someone listening to this right now 
might hold the key to solving Jennifer's disappearance. It's a long shot, but it's not impossible. And that's why we're doing this, right? <laughs> to get Jennifer's story out there, to remind people that she's still missing. And that her family deserves answers. Imagine, after 40 years, still not knowing what happened to your daughter, your sister, your friend. It's heartbreaking. And if there's even the slightest chance that someone listening knows something, anything at all, that could help bring Jennifer home. They need to come forward. Contact Detective Filter. His information's in the show notes. Even if you think what you remember is insignificant, it might be the missing piece of the puzzle. Because sometimes solving a mystery like this isn't about finding that one big clue. Sometimes it's about piecing together all those little details, those seemingly insignificant memories that together can paint a clearer picture of what happened. Exactly. It's like that saying, the truth is out there. We just have to know where to look. And sometimes the best place to look is in the memories of those who were there. So if you were in Nashville back in 1980, if you knew Jennifer Wyant, if you were at that Taco Bell, that softball game, that party, or even if you just remember seeing something a little off around that time. Don't stay silent. Reach out. You might just be the one to finally bring Jennifer home. This case, it's a stark reminder that sometimes, even in the most ordinary of lives, the unexpected can happen. But it also shows us the power of collective memory, the importance of never giving up hope, and the strength of a community coming together to seek answers. Jennifer Wyatt might be gone, but she's not forgotten. And we won't stop searching for answers until she's home.